My name's Rusty Sutton. I'm the redneck boat guy. I build two-cylinder racing outboard boats. I build the props to go on them, and we also sail a 33-foot catamaran named See Y'all Later. Hope you enjoy the channel. Well, hello again, race fans. This is Rusty back at the Redneck Garage. Hey, man, we've been on tour. <laughs> we've been gone a solid month from the house. And, uh, you know, I hadn't shown the end of the uh, videos of the boat build, but I'm going to do that here. I'm going to start with this video and uh, or continue with this video and uh, tell you a little bit about what we've been doing. We, like I say, we went to Clarksville and uh, had a little bit of problem with the Yamato 80 mod, our little B mod. Had some ignition issues that we had to sort out. So we didn't get to run it, but the little 80, I mean, sorry, the little 102 that we run, the little 24 cubic inch Yamato, that thing was a beast. Uh, we did really good with that one. And uh, Russ got some time in the boat. We figured out what we needed to do. Uh, he came back, changed his steering hub. He also did a little bit of uh, some other things to the boat. We made a back fin. The boat was crossing up too much in the turns. So we made a little back fin to keep it in line a little bit and moved the uh, side fin on the left back an inch. So uh, those are the those are the things we did while uh, Russ did while I was on vacation. What Linda and I did after Clarksville was we uh, we took time to go to Branson. So we were in the RV and we left uh, Arkansas, went to Branson, Missouri, and spent uh, probably a little over a week there around Table Rock Lake. And we had pulled a Jeep with us so we could go into town and. We saw like five shows, man. We had a good time there in Branson. And from Branson, we had three weeks in between the races between uh, Clarksville and, and then Grove, Oklahoma. So uh, then we went to my brother's house in Mound City, Kansas. And boy, he got a nice spread. I'll throw up a little couple of shots of his little area there that I say little area. You got 40 acres there. <laughs> Pretty nice place. So uh, I'll show you that. But the main thing I want to do is. Uh, you know, we just got back and uh, I got behind on my videos, so I want to catch up on the boat bill videos. And uh, from there, uh, I'll show you at the end of the video, I'll show you some live footage of some of the things we've been doing uh, as far as uh, running a boat. And uh, <laughs> that thing is a beast. I couldn't be more pleased with how the boat turned out. It. Uh, uh, we did some other things with the exhaust system and uh, a couple things, and I built another prop that just turned out to be a monster. So anyway, um, we'll be showing you some of that live footage at the end of the video. But here, let's catch you up on the boat build. Well, this is the eight foot mark, so we had to go a little bit further forward. Uh, we had some wood that was right in here that looked like it was starting to delaminate, so. Went all the way to the front. Well, almost got a little bit left there, but got my piece cut, and I'll be uh, putting that on, sanding that out. Yeah, let's get right back into the build. Yeah, what we had done is uh, I took all the wood off of the inside non-trip, the turning fin side, and uh, the reason I did that is the uh, we had a little bit of delamination in places, and you know you don't have to worry about. Uh, delamination or any problems when uh yeah you only bring in one boat you kind of gotta you, you kind of need it so i ended up taking uh all the wood off of both non-trips and replacing it and that's what you see here we've got the back in back end wood already on and now we're going to replace this little front section and uh heck we'll work it back out put a little maybe carbon fiber over the top of it but uh you know we'll have a consistent solid program then we'll have uh you know probably didn't have to go this far but uh hey when you're boat racing and you're a long ways away from home you might want to make sure everything's right and while i had it on the operating table that's exactly what we did so uh let's replace replace this front end here and uh see what happens next
Now floating two inches of water. Yeah, we turned the boat up on the side and uh, mixing up some thickened epoxy, uh, using the micro bubbles in there to uh, make it thicker. Uh, <laughs> we sped the video up here, of course, to uh, uh, so it wouldn't take up so much time in the video, but. Yeah, we put that uh, thickened epoxy in the crack. Uh, I say the crack. Uh, we wanted to level the uh, side of the lap strake and fill that in with these micro bubbles so that we could sand it down and make a nice clean edge. And that's what we're doing here. Uh, it worked out really well for us. Uh, we laid that micro bubbles uh, west system in there, fared it out, and uh, eventually. We came back and did a lot of fairing and straightening of the edges and uh, working on our uh, radiuses up front. Uh, I don't know if you can tell it from here, but ahead of the throttle, my boat gets a little bit narrower, right, uh, in width. So what that does is you can jam that boat down in the water and you've got an outside edge that won't, makes the boat want to turn. Um, so that's one of the little tricks that I've done is instead of carrying the boat straight all the way and then going up with the non-trip uh, to blend up into nothing, uh, I'm actually using that edge, that right edge, to uh, make it to where you can jam the boat down in the water and uh, that right edge will make it turn to the left just a little bit. So eh, just another little trick that uh, I think it's working out for us. Like I say, it kind of makes it harder to drive, but uh, you know, you, you got to think about all the things that, that it takes to make the boat work. But uh, once you figure out how to drive it, <laughs> it's got a bunch of little tricks to it that, that make it come out and make it work right, I think. But uh, yeah, enjoy the rest of the video. Um, we're about to get the, uh, the non-trip sealed up here, make a new lap strike. And we'll be doing a lot of fairing and cleaning up to uh, to make it nice, make the angles we want. Yeah, on this angle, you can see that uh, peanut butter uh, thickness, uh, thickened epoxy, where it's laid in there. And uh, of course, we've added more than we need so that we can sand it back and uh, make a nice clean edge on this lap strike. You know, that's a key to making a boat clean up and run: is having a nice straight clean lap strake where the uh, water doesn't follow up the non-trips. Of course on the inside uh, you're not going to have that very much anyway on the turning fin side but in the straightaways you want them nice and clean. Fix the glue it to it man. That's where the side fin goes. So I'm double reinforcing this before I lay the final coat of carbon fiber over the outside. It's pretty stiff now. Uh, really shouldn't have an issue. Mix up some glue. I've already got it wiped down. You're going to tell them to never use Kevlar on the yeah, outside? Yeah, Kevlar. <laughs> It's hard to sand. <laughs> it's hard to get a cover coat on. Uh, I don't know how you do it, man. We've tried putting peel ply over the outside, but it seems like the grain just keeps coming up. Holy moly. We did that on the opposite side over there, and it's, uh, yeah. it's twice the work It's finishing anything else. Crazy. 
It's tough though, I guess. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's what we're proving. This is so he can rub when he's racing. Yeah, man, rubbing's racing. <laughs> Every time I do something to boat rust, if it's lightning it somewhere or, you know, he has a question about it, I say, man, I don't know. I don't have to drive it. <laughs> I don't know. It might work. I don't have to drive it. You tell me. <laughs> That's our favorite joke. I don't know. I don't have to drive it. Yeah, we're going to speed this up, push on through some of this uh, carbon fiber uh, uh, layup here, putting on the first layer. Uh, and all this is is really to strengthen the location that the turning fin is going to bolt to. So I got one piece going on here, and uh, we'll come back with another piece over that. And then once we finish the layup, there will be three layers of carbon fiber over the fin location on the outside and it's got an aluminum plate that is screwed to the stringers on the inside that it bolts through as well so i just don't have any uh concerns about uh losing the side fin or breaking any wood here because we've strategically uh built up these areas so that they work really really well put the cut edge there. All right. Rub it in. Rub it in. I think it'd be wise to go ahead and put my, uh, peel ply on so that I don't upset the strands. I noticed I was pulling a little bit of strands on that last time. It'd be better if I don't do that. And you can tell on the peel ply a little better where the glue's coming up. Go cut me a piece of that. Pick up any excess moisture. Any excess glue. Yeah. Doing, buddy. Hey, how's it going? Oh, it's going great. I'm putting putting carbon fiber right under the fin. There you go. <laughs> uh, hey, you don't have to know if Michael's ready for his RV yet, huh? I was uh, just thinking, I mean, he don't have to be, but I was just wondering if you could more luck bring it for him. Yeah, I, I, I'll call him right quick, but I don't think so. Okay, well, if you hadn't heard that he is, then it's probably not. Yeah, I mean, he's got bids for the gate. I don't know if he's got it up yet or if he's willing to risk, you know, the time no. for the HOA. It, it, it ain't no big deal. We can do it another day. Yeah, yeah. No, that's good about uh, 
making a good trip though. Yeah, I mean, I got all your wood loaded up the back of the truck. Oh, so. do you? Yeah. All right. Yeah, it ain't that bad. Good. All right. Come on. Well, I'm about to head that way here shortly. Sounds good, man. All right. We'll see you in a bit. All right. Bye, Russ. The man himself. Yeah, the driver. He's coming to defend himself, I guess. Everything I can get up through that field fly to wet the top. It's tightening the grip on the on the uh, weave, but it's also taking any extra glue out of there that we don't need. Both of those are good for me. Tight weave and removing the extra glue. It's nice and wet. I can see that there's no light spots. So I'm being able to pull up plenty of moisture from the layup underneath. We put just a clear coat on over it, John? Yeah. That'll be the third clear coat on top of the wood. The first one, no, I pulled that Kevlar. The grain still came up. Second one still came Second up. Second one still came up. <laughs> this is the third one, so we're hoping we can get it with that. Kevlar's tough, but it's ugly to work with. Or I, I'm concerned. Then you know, carbon fiber is just really not. Nice. It's is nicer, nicer than fiberglass. But in hindsight, I think it would have been better inside. <laughs> yeah, but the abrasive resistance That's is what it's all about. So yeah. putting it on the outside, we can get that. It makes sense, right, to have it on the outside. rolled in nicely. Two layers on it. Well, that's not quite enough, probably. It does have a thick aluminum plate on the inside the screw tube, so it's not just the, uh, not just the outside wood and carbon fiber it also has that backing all right one of the things i really like is i got three of my grand kitties coming here they came to the boat race this is lola and hannah there you go that's all three of them right there thank y'all <laughs> had three girls that came and uh cameron was uh Probably, she's the tallest, but she's the sweetest. How's that right there? And then Lola, this is Lola. And Hannah. And Cameron. Thank y'all for coming to the boat races. Bye bye. Who you, who you out running? Everybody? <laughs> Cool. Everybody except for Elena Williams. Oh yeah? Mm -hmm. <laughs>